Hey guys, how's it going? Today I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, some quick commands and how to use this toolbar right here to help improve your workflow and your speed in Logic Pro. Let's jump in right away. Right here you can see that this is my main pointer tool. I like to keep it on that for the most part. And then this is my uh, click command tool or my secondary tool. I keep that on scissors a lot and, and basically what will happen is if I go into uh, an, an audio file just like this and I hit command, I can snip right there, you know? So that's what the scissors are for. See this little fade right here? I'm actually going to remove that so you can see how a crossfade works. This is my crossfade tool. And when I hit command, I can turn my pointer into a crossfade. Uh, a good reason to do that is to kind of just smooth out to make sure that there's no pops or clips, especially if you've got like, let's say, uh, let's say you've got a vocal that you comped and you know, there's a bunch of different audio regions that you've put together in one file, um, they're not going to just transition into each other smoothly. You're going to want to crossfade the edges so that, uh, so that it doesn't make any popping or clicking sounds. Um, another tool that I find really useful is the marquee tool. This kind of brings us into Pro Tools land a little bit in the sense that you can, uh, you can use it to just kind of do this and then like, boom, just get rid of it. I love that. I miss that in Pro Tools. <laughs> um, but, uh, you can also use that for automation. It's pretty cool. Let's say we're in a track and uh, we want to just grab this section, click it. We just automate that section. Go over here, click it, automate that section. Oh, I actually want to grab that. Boom. Pull that down. You know, so um, that's what I like to use the marquee tool for mainly. Um, another cool thing you can do so that you don't have to use your click command, I mean, it's pretty quick, but if you actually just push T to get to your toolbar, it'll bring, bring you right to what you need. So I oftentimes, if I want to cross, let's say I want to fade the edges of these three tracks, I'm not going to go up here, select my fade tool because I was probably on something else like scissors or whatever. I'm just going to go like this. I'm going to go T, A, boom, highlight, fade, T, T, I'm back to pointer, you know. I use that mainly for the fader tool more than anything, you know, TA highlight and then I'm out with TT, TT brings me back. So that's just a couple quick things about this. Um, I'm not going to go through all of them, but um, another one is a good one is TM. I just want to mute that region. TT, I'm back to pointer. TM, I just want to mute that region. TT, I'm back to pointer. TS, I want to solo. Uh oh, I might be wrong. No, that's right. S, there we go. I want to solo that region. So that's how that works out. The TT, I'm going to go back to where we started. So let's talk about some other quick commands about to, how to get started quicker. Um, you can use this plus sign up here to add a new track. Sure. You can add a new track from up here as well, but uh, option command N will actually get you there pretty quickly. And then I just use my arrows to go through where I need to be, you know, software instrument, audio. I want to do three audio tracks. I put in the number three, three become available. Um, another cool thing that you can do to uh, to move quicker is you can command D will just duplicate the style of track that you're on. So I'm on an audio track with no plugins currently. Pushing command D will give me exactly that. Now if I am on a track that has some plugins like this one, uh, my kick has a Camel Crush, you know, Channel EQ. If I put command D, it's going to give me another track with those same plugins on it, which could be uh, really useful when you're wanting to do uh, tracks with similar plugins, obviously. So um, let's see, we got Command D for a new track. Oh, let's do a bounce in place really quick. A lot of times as you're going through your session, like for example, I've got, you know, compression and a little reverb and an EQ on this. I can commit this and if I, if I bounce it in place by pushing Control B and let's just say snare.cm so that I know it's committed. I'm going to keep my normalize it off. Um, and uh, I'm going to mute the original take and I'll tell you why. Because after it goes through and it bounces it out, first of all, that's going to save me a lot of CPU so my computer doesn't have to think as hard. So now I've committed this track into place but without my computer having to choke up to catch up with all the plugins. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to bypass all these plugins on the original track, turn this track off, and then I'm going to control click it and, and mute it control click it and hide it. And now it's out of my way. But if for any reason I come back and I'm like, oh man, I just want to make a little bit of tweak on, you know, on that compressor, or that EQ or whatever, no problem. I hit H. I'm going to find that snare, click it, H again, get it back. And then I can get in there and tweak those plugins again. 
but bouncing in place can be really helpful to just commit things as you go so that your session rose, uh, runs a lot more smoothly. Um, it, it just doesn't choke it up all the time, which could be super, super nice. Um, I think the last thing that I want to do in this video is just talk about simply how to bounce a track out. So, uh, I want to listen, I want to grab where the beginning of my track is, which I can see starts right here. And let's, this is the cycle up here. You can grab it anywhere and just click and drag. So in this case, I always like to go just to like a hair before where it actually starts in case there's any, you know, thing that started before the one. And then I'm going to drag, I'm going to drag that to the end of the track. And we'll double check that. Make sure you. Anyways, you want to make sure you catch the end of the tail if there's any reverb or delay at the end of the track. Um, another way to get your cycle to go on and off is by pushing C. So once you've engaged it, you can just make C to make it go away. And I think I actually grabbed it and drug it a little bit, so I'm just going to drag it back out here. Great. So now we're going to push Command B, and that's how we're going to bounce this down to an MP3 or a wave or whatever. I'm going to go wave 2448 right here, and that'll bounce out a wave file for me. And um, once you do that, if you have it here, add to your iTunes. It'll just drop into your iTunes and be ready for you to go.